question. How's she look? It's like really, really nice and straight. After accepting the fact the original trees we cut down for masts wasn't going to work for our main, we laminated up a new one. Starting with level stands, we put our boards in order, and with Reed's help, glued it up. Now we're checking to see how the epoxy is hardening. Alright Captain, how's she look next morning? Really good. Yeah. Really, really nice, tight um, clip. <laughs> layup. Yeah, the layup looks really good. There's a good squeeze out over everything. So while we waited for the epoxy to fully cure, Garrett gathered his measurements. So I'm gonna um, <clears throat> do the thing with the stuff because I'm building the main mast right now so I need to take some accurate measurements of the uh, mast step which I already built and it's already spiked into the keel. It's going to be kind of like a, a male rectangle cut into the bottom of the mast and then there's a female rectangle in the mast step to accept that so I need to measure that out and then also the step is on an angle so I need to take that angle with a t-bevel and then bring that over to the mast so I can cut that out. But first I have to cut open the uh, cabin sole. Here's where the mast is gonna come through, just forward uh, where the head's gonna be. So when I put in the sole here, I knew I was gonna have to eventually come back and cut this open. So, you know, I just gave myself a really rough, like that's basically where the mast is gonna go-ish. So. That'll just let me cut a rough hole in there so I can see the step and then I can figure out exactly where to cut it. Um, so yeah, I'll start there. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually cut like a bigger rectangular axis hatch. Um, and so that whole area will be open um, and then eventually inside in the middle of that access hatch it's going to be you know that hatch will probably be cut down the middle where the mass comes through and on each side there'll be a half circle <clears throat> that's where the mass will come through um, but then you can take each side off so you have full access to get down and inspect the step and everything Using his handy dandy bevel, Garrett got all the necessary angles to shape the peg that will insert into the mast step atop the keel. After removing all the clamps and wax paper, we were able to take a good look at the mast. Ooh. Pretty impressed with us. <laughs> hey, say that again. <laughs> said I'm pretty impressed. It uh, came out 
ridiculously straight. <laughs> like, on like all four or all sides, it's like perfect. <laughs> so I will start with, well, first things first, I'm just gonna take the planer and I'm just gonna buzz off all the drips. So I'm just dealing with four nice smooth sides. And once I do that, then I'll run the skill saw to 45, uh, the maximum depth on both sides on each face. That'll give me eight side um, an octagon mast. From there, I'm just gonna start working it down with the power planer and just kind of start rounding it by eye. I'm not gonna do anything fancy. As long as it looks nice and round by eye, then that's good for me. And then I'll probably switch to, um, if we still have to kind of do more material removal, I'll probably switch to the best tool um, with 40 grit on grinder mode and then I can work it down. And then I'll switch to probably the little five inch orbital and then eventually work my way down to the little Makita finish sander. While I still have four nice square sides, I'm gonna cut the um, base of the mast where it'll um, insert into the mast step because it'll be a lot easier to do when it's square sided because that way I can use the square and I can use my skill saw and just set the angle on the skill saw and the depth on the skill saw and I can just run it and then knock it out with the chisel or whatever. So I'll do that first thing right after I plane down the squeeze out. So we orientated each individual board so that any imperfections would be shaped or cut off. The bottom end is getting the most removed and then a peg will be cut out which will sit into the mast step through the deck. The top end will be trimmed and then routed down to round. We might not have any electrical run up to the masthead. Since we're a traditional rig, most things can be run up the shrouds. take this square down to round, leaving us about seven and a half inches in diameter and 39 feet in length. It's gonna be a simple cut. It's still just gonna be a square, but this is gonna be angled. Basically all I've gotta do is figure out which side goes where, and then get my T-bevel that I've already got set, run my angles 
on either side. Skill saw. Zip out that angle. And then I'll probably just get my hand saw and then just rip the rest of it. So that'll just give me one straight angle. Then what I need to do is take my skill saw and I need to come an inch and a half up and I need to cut on all four sides the depth in to get a five by four male plug mm -hmm. on the bottom. So it's all simple stuff, but I'm just gonna need to flip the mast back and forth a bunch. Seven and a half feet tall. Because huh? that's at 39 feet. Because it's an inch and a half. How do you get 37 so, feet if you take an inch and a half off of 39 feet? Because that would be 38, 37 and a half. Right? You're right. <laughs> right? No. What? Oh, I was thinking a, a foot and a half. I got it. Dude. Don't look at me like I'm crazy waiting for me to figure it out, you butthole. Look, I want to let you figure it out here. I believe in you. Oh, don't patronize me. So when Garrett starts to make fun of me, I take that as my cue to go do some chores. Alright, Ruth left me in charge of the camera again, which means I forgot to film half of what I just did. <laughs> the wind is so bad you can't really hear what he's saying, but he cut the whole base of the mast with the circular saw to the angle of the mast step, then transferred his measurements to the base of the mast and again used the circular and hand saw to cut the depth of the mast peg. The mast is raked back slightly, so this was also taken into consideration when cutting the base angle. Okay, my bad. I forgot to film again, but <laughs> I remembered sooner than I did before. I'm just gonna take my handsaw. It's pretty much there already. He repeated that move two more times and the mast peg was cut. Now to eight side the mast, to then round the edges with the planer and multiple sanders. So I've got my center lines on all four sides. So now I need to figure out how much I need to cut off of each edge and still have more or less equal sides. Cause the thing is, it's a little bit longer this way than it is this way. So I can't do it perfectly. 45. Equal. I can do it 45, I just, these faces are going to be, this one's going to be slightly bigger than this one. Um, so, that's what I'm working with. <laughs> and a bit of a tired brain today. Mm-hmm. I feel, I think, 
mud brain. I don't know why. This makes day four of long hours working on the mass project. We started building Red Aviva pulling 12 hour days, seven days a week. And after four years of wear and tear, our bodies much prefer five hour work days. It did feel good to know we still had 10 hour work days in us with this project. That's what I was gonna do. up with an eight-sided mask, leaving the start of the days of sanding till tomorrow. 
We still have a little over a week to go, but already we feel really solid about our decision to build a fresh mast. At this stage of the build, it's super important to work on the things you're motivated to work on because it all has to get done. Up next, where the hounds will be. We break out the plans and hit the books. You usually have these, these cheeks or hounds, um, and the shrouds come and they wrap all the way around the mast. To begin building the hounds for the mast. Then, the days finally come to start shaping down the mast. We slowly sand it all round, including rounding the masthead. And finally, slop on some soup. 